Greetings all, this is Harry Nick. This is Justin. We have some more X-Wing spores to talk about oh, today. I was so happy when this came out today. Yeah, um, it's been a bit of a weird spoiler season. It's been a fortnight since the last one. Yeah. And then it was a week, and then it was kind of a fortnight, then like the 10 days. So... Wasn't there one, yeah, there was the Friday it came out, and then... The next Monday something came out and you're like, why are you doing this to me? Yeah, pretty much. I, I'm not sure what's going on here at FFG. At, at this rate, I'm really not confident of this quarter one release. Oh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. It does say in this article that, yes, we're getting the quarter one release still. Uh, I would have thought by this stage FFG would know for sure, so maybe. I mean, basically we mm. need this article, um, and this is like all the new ships covered now yeah. but then there's also the separate pack for the Ark uh, Jedi Starfighter uh, Vulture Droid Z95 if, and if they want to do articles on the Z and the TIE Striker, Striker. Yeah. Um, I don't think they have to because no. we know that no new cards are coming in that the yeah. um, uh, Wave article specifically said it's all reprints mm. so I don't know I'm not too confident I'm, I still think we're looking at April at this stage but uh, we'll see FFG maybe, maybe, feel free to prove me wrong please maybe very end of March like it comes out the 31st of March yeah just to spite me just, just, just to spite me um, I, I wouldn't be annoyed I would not be annoyed no. go ahead please do it <laughs> Um, but anyway, for today we got some new spoilers for the Sith Infiltrator. Oh, oh man, I'm so excited for this ship. I, originally, I was like, oh look, I might buy this just for the collection. Yeah, you just want uh, the Vulture Droids, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm now looking at this going, oh, I'm going to be spending a bit of money. Oh, I was hyped <laughs> for this the second it was spoiled at Gen Con. I'm yeah. like, oh, I want to fly Sith <laughs> Infiltrator. Now, look, before we talk about anything else, let's just address the elephant in the room. It's a big ship. They are really struggling right now. Mm. Um, I think FFG may be looking at that fact and uh, costing it slightly lower than they would have otherwise is well, a possibility. You've also got to consider it's going to be coming out when they've only other got, got two other ships, so... Uh, yes, it, this it Vulture is, and... Yeah, you're right, yeah. Yeah, so it is going to be fairly cheap. You're basically looking... It's got to be at least... Less oh, around the price of a Millennium Falcon or less? I think it would have to be less for sure. Yeah. Definitely less than the Resistance one. Yeah, um, yeah uh, we've seen that already. FFG seem to be costing uh, First Order and Resistance stuff a little bit cheaper just to make list building possible at all. Mm. Um, it seems to be paying off when we haven't got the meta stuff. Oh, um, yeah. uh, but looking at the Scimitar, it's hard to place because it's a big ship with only a forward arc. Um, mm. It sort of feels like it's filling the role of the IG-2000 from 1st edition. I agree with you on that one, yeah. Uh, the dial is not dissimilar. I'll put them up here on the screen so you guys can see. Um, those 2-speed S-loops and the 5-speed K-turn is that nuts. 5 <laughs> is just... It's going to make it crazy huge. to fly. Um, just so you guys um, are aware, that's almost the entire length of a range ruler um, mm. in terms of where your ship's going to reach. So be very, very careful... I've flown IGs off the board mm. with a 4K turn. It's very easy to do yeah. um, with a brawler, so just be very careful of that. And two-speed S-loops is very, very aggressive. Yeah, yeah just like really awesome dial. Uh, always having access to all of the hard turns plus all the straights and banks is something that you must never ignore. That mm. is a seriously powerful thing for a ship to be able to do. I mean, the one hard to red, but... I I don't, I don't think that's care. going to be a problem. I think it's good just to have the option, just yeah. in case. Um, look, you're going to not use it when you can avoid it. Hmm. But if you have to use it, I'd rather have it than not. Oh, yeah, definitely. Personally, um, they could have easily just left it off, and I still hmm. think it would be a pretty decent dial. Hmm. So, yes, looks pretty legit. Also, we had the title spoiled. Before we go through all the pilots, we'll talk about that. Yeah, Separatist Sith Infiltrator, so it's only going specifically on the ship out of this pack. Mm. Set up after the place forces step, you may cloak. After you decloak, you may choose an enemy ship in your bullseye firing arc. If you do, it gains a jam token. Gains the um, red cloak action and the white jam action. This is something else. It feels like it's kind of in Punishing One territory where it seriously upgrades your ship to the point where... It's basically in a separate class, which makes it expensive, probably. Yeah. I mean, all of this is so good. Yeah. Um, adding the jam alone is pretty legitimate. Um, jamming your opponent um, when you decloak 
I mean, it's not going to happen all the time. It's on no. a big ship, a bullseye big ship. Not easy to pull off, but still. Yeah, if and, you're versing a swarm, there's going to be something there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, versing other big ships, it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, and putting a cloak, even if it's a red cloak, I don't care. That's so good on a big ship. Yeah. Not and, only that, you're starting off with the, it yes, on play. Uh, which is a way of somewhat mitigating the fact that it's a red cloak. It means mm. you're not doing a red action straight away. I mean, look, basically, if you just had a regular cloak, you could just do it in the first round for the same effect. Yeah. This way, you're not stressing out. So, like, if you have to engage in the second and third round, that's not a problem anymore. Yeah, yeah um, I don't think this is going to be cheap. I, I mean, I don't like to speculate about points because we don't know how... It's such an unknown quantity having a big ship with a cloak on yeah. a platform that's so bizarre and different. I'm going to guess around eight, nine points. So the punishing one's worth eight points. I feel like... I want to say this is better than punishing one. Yeah. But situational, so asterisks... It, yeah, because yeah. I was also going to go... Raise Millennium Falcon gives you two stress and... You can do stuff while stressed. And, I think and that's this only is, five. I think this is definitely better than Raise Millennium Falcon. I yeah. think it's round the territory of punishing one, perhaps a hair better. Hmm. Um, as I said, like yeah, I think eight points is probably conservative. It could be more than that. It is seriously pushing the power level of this platform. It is making this platform relevant. Yeah. I don't think it's irrelevant with the stats it's got. Um, in fact, let's just bring up the generic pilot so we can see what that is. Mm. Um, if this is cheap enough, the fact that it's giving you three red dice, um, ten health to shoot through, yeah. um, I don't think we're going to be able to fill four of it. I think we're pretty comfortably out of that range. Yeah. Um, I don't think at the third of your list kind of stats, yeah, I think it's just about there. Um, I think about the fire spray being at the third of your list um, points range. This has one agility, and that is really rough. I was going to say, I suppose if you look at the First Order... Yeah, the Upsilon, yeah. They're running three Upsilons, and... They're having a good time with it. I know that's not seriously meta right now, Um, but Red Barrel Roll, no Reinforce, no Evade. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think we're looking pretty comfortably at the, what, the 66 point range makes it, I think it's, I, I want to say like bottom 60, top 70, somewhere around about there. I'm not going to speculate yeah. too hard on the points, but looking at these ship stats, like people are saying, oh, I hope we can field two of them. I'm very confident you'll be able to field two of these. Yeah. Now, um, now even two I, of the force use, I think it's going to happen. Now that I think about it, because I was th- just realized the Upsilon's three, I think, yeah, you should be able to feel through. Pretty comfortably. Pretty yeah. comfortably. Anyway, let's have a look at the named pilots. Uh, going lowest to highest initiative, hmm. 066, initiative 3. After you defend, you may spend one calculate token to perform an action. This is really cool, um, but hmm. it's definitely not as interesting as Duke or Maul. No, I think, um, though, he's going to... He should see some play, especially if with the calculate. He means, means that other droids can use his calculate... Uh, um, yes, um, you can work with some tactical relays as well. Yeah, um, could be a cheap option to take one of the tactical relay cards. That's not irrelevant. Mm. Um, but look, we are looking at these force users going. Yeah, I think uh, that's. Oh yeah, they're, they're they're miles ahead of this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But let's move on to Count Dooku because this is the thing which we're looking at. For me, I think Count Dooku is most hype. Um, Maul is really cool as well because of mm. Initiative 5, and that may be the thing which pushes Maul over the edge. But wow, Count Dooku, um, with that title, oh yes. Mm. Um, three Force Tokens, after you defend, if the attacker is in your firing arc, you may spend a Force Token to remove one blue or red token. Yes, we didn't read that wrong in the original spread. Mm. Oh wow. Um, also, after you perform an attack, if it hits, you may spend a Force to perform an action. So let's talk about both of these things separately. First of all, um, after you defend, you may spend a force to remove um, a blue or red token. You've got to be inside the firing arc. I mean, if you're just conservative in the way you fly, that's not going to be too difficult. Mm. With that dial, that's not going to be hard to pull off. No. Um, yeah, after you defend, you can remove a cloak token. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Or, or if you're stressed, remove the stress so that you can then do a K turn the next turn. Or strained, if yeah. you're really, if that's a consideration for some reason. Yeah, mm. cool. Um, yeah, look, the fact that it can do stress and strain is awesome, but the really hype thing with this is your opponent shoots your cloaked ship, you then decloak, you shoot them back, 
and then recloak with the second paragraph. I yep. love that. That's it's That's something so else. powerful. Um, also, yeah. it should be noted we can go over three force tokens with this platform. Mm. So the fact that you're burning through force, um, two of the three force tokens is actually not the end of the world because you can get more. We'll talk a bit more about that later on. I mean, yes, your opponent can just choose not to shoot Count Dooku and make him feel very awkward about himself. Yeah. What your opponent can do, they can choose not to shoot you. So essentially, Count Dooku can't shoot them back. However, look, we see yeah. this um, sometimes with Dengar and Quick Draw, specifically Quick Draw. Um, we'll be talking about meta play right now. Um, making your opponent not shoot you is really powerful, yeah. and it's totally worth it. It's like completely worth it. Um, yeah, I dig that a lot. I, yeah. I like so much about this. And the fact of the matter is you can do that cloaking interaction shenanigans, but you can still do other stuff with both of these paragraphs. You can still remove stress tokens. The second paragraph can still make you bow roll to get, uh, not to get another shot, no. But you can bow roll to arc dodge out of another shot. Yeah. Um, or just target lock or focus for the next shot. Uh, uh, another or... card gives you a different action, which is still absolutely mm. dope with that interaction. I just realised as well. You can still jam someone after this as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. There is so many options here. Just... Yeah. Um, I actually think there is a good chance that Count Dooku is going to cost more than Maul. Yeah, There's I can good, see that. Like, Maul has a really spiky effect, um, but Count Dooku what, Maul... is consistent. It feels like a bit more of a... It feels like a more of a tournament card. Yeah, I, I feel like Maul is... He's in it for himself, while Count Dooku helps out your entire team. Yes, indeed. And mm. More consistent as well. But let's yeah. just go on to more right now. Initiative 5, still three force charges. Mm. After performing an attack, you may spend two force charges to perform a bonus primary attack against a different target, or the same one if you missed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a bad card. It's very good. So if you're missing an attack, twice. if you miss an attack, you have like the old gunner effect, where you mm. can just double tap the same target. Which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, or you can tap two different things, kind of like Bistan. Bistan's not really seeing play right now, so maybe that's not the best comparison to make. Yeah. Um, I suppose the only problem is you've got to spend two force, which means that you can only do it once. Again, he can get the fourth force token yeah. if need be through another upgrade, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, I don't care that he has to spend two force. I think having mm. that flexibility is really powerful. I mean, dude, you'll spend it for another attack. Yeah. Any day of the week, it's a lot of upside. Um, yeah, it means like the second attack doesn't have as much modification, which, which sucks suppose, if you miss. I suppose, though, if you focus and then you attack, mm. you've, got, you've still got two force for the first attack. Yeah. And then you've got the focus for the second one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, there's lots of flexibility here. If you, like, roll on an attack and you just roll uh, like blank focus focus you go I could make two hits there or I could just attack them again yeah. with those two force and then I mean there's more potential downside there as well because you might blank out completely mm. um, and then you curse the dice gods for all eternity <laughs> but at the same time I like having these options I, I like yeah. having in that situation that I just described, you could go for a consistent play or a much better upside. And in different game states, you mm. might go, no, I have to hit them with three dice, so I'll go for the other attack. Or you go, no, no, I'm going to go for the more consistent two hits. Um, it, it And it's benefiting the better player as well. Mm. I, I like those kind of situations where you go for percentage over upside. Um, that's a whole other conversation about um, competitive tournament play, and I love that Maul's playing into that. Yeah. Um, and because of Maul's potential upside, I think he probably will cost more than Dooku, but I think there's a chance Dooku costs more because yeah. of all of that text and how well, awesome that is. I, I think they're, they're bringing out hate in this pack. Oh, yeah. yeah hate oh. is definitely going on Darth Maul. Just staple that onto Maul yeah. any day of the week. Um, he wants to get those Force Charges back back and do this again yeah it, it wants to be up every single turn in other words but yeah. with Dooku I think you've got choices yes um Maul can't be cloaked and attack the same turn Dooku can mm. I didn't think mm. about that mm, 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 mm. oh I, I can't decide Justin I actually can't decide but mm. Maul can decloak jam a ship in his bullseye firing arc which in itself is a defensive capability 
Yeah. It's so hard to place these guys in my mind. I mean, I feel like Dooku's ability is just more powerful, but he's too less initiative. And yeah, we we could prattle on about this for hours in the comment section, guys. You you prattle. Well, yeah, you, you <laughs> prattle. You, you prattle. Let's talk about these upgrade cards. Yeah. Um, let's go on to this stuff because oh, yeah. yeah, um, this is a very very comprehensive article. Um, let's first talk about this tactical relay card. Um, because it's probably the least interesting thing going on here, but it's another tactical relay. It's relevant for this and for the Belbalub. That's the word I want to yep. think of. Um, K2B4 was in the Citadel Clone Wars episodes. Oh, very good. There you uh, go. Yes. Uh, yes. I, uh, there's so many Clone Wars episodes. They just sort of blur in my mind. So mm. thank you for reminding me of that. While a friendly ship at range 0 to 3 defends, it may spend a calculate token. If it does, add an evade result. Unless the attacker chooses to gain one strain token, that's very powerful. Yeah. Um, adding this is going to be results. worth a fair amount of points. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, the idea here is your opponent's always going to choose the thing which is best for them. I understand that. That does really temper the power level of cards. Uh, this is to go alongside Vulture Droids. Um, I don't think this is actually that relevant on the Sith Infiltrate. I mean, yeah, mm. it can use the effect itself. But the fact of the matter is, um, if you're pressuring your opponent with, like... If you get three Vulture Droids um, against one ship, and they shoot you, and you go, Okay, you want to take a Strain Token? You mm. probably don't, because I'm going to triple tap you in a second. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're adding Evade Results. Adding Evade Results. That doesn't Sweet. happen in 2nd Edition. You usually change a dice. Yeah. Um, I mean, you are spending a Calculate Token, but it's fine. I, I don't care. It's absolutely fine. Um, Vulture Droids can spend Calculate Tokens off their buddies nearby, so they can use those Calculate Tokens on the dice mm. and use this effect to add another result. Yeah, it's really good. It's yeah. very strong. Um, I'm very curious to see what all these um, solitary cards cost. Because um, I'm looking at all of them thinking, these all have a home. Mm. Um, I'm very curious. It's, yeah, how you want to play, basically. So, Count Dooku. Count Dooku. Okay, so this is pretty curious because essentially we have another fixed version of yeah. the 1.0 palp. Um, it's ta it's, uh, let's just read through it first. Mm. Uh, one force charge. Before a ship at range 0 to 2 rolls attack or defense dice, if all your force are active, you may spend a force to name a result. If that result is not rolled uh, change one of the dice to that result. Yeah, so it's kind of a mix of Palp and C-3PO. Uh, yes. Mm. Yeah, on, the, on the scimitar, you can force through one of a result, which is very powerful, assuming it's um, cost-effective. Mm. Uh, but it's sort of like um, old Palp, how they fixed it to you have to announce the result first. Mm. Except it's even worse than that because it has to be at range 0, 1, 2. It's not the whole board. Um, you, all your force have to be active, so you mm. can't just put on like a force user and... Yeah, you that can't, kind of stuff. can't put it on Maul and ha have him use no, the second attack. This is probably for the cheaper pilots. Yeah. Um, there was one other stipulation as well. Oh, yes. It also cannot change the result if that result was rolled. Yeah. So a lot of stipulations going on here. So I think mm. personally, on attack dice, you roll critical. Yeah. And or for scimitars, you force through an evade result. That's yeah. like the best case scenario for this. Mm. It's not. It, look, the separatists can't just take palp. No, yeah. Well, not. Not the same. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, it's it's undoubtedly a powerful effect because that fixed version of Palp did see a lot of play in first edition, and second edition doesn't have those same kind of dice mods. Mm. So yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I think this is going to see some play as well. Um, let's talk about General Grievous. Um, while you defend after the neutralized result step, if there are two or more hit or crit results, you may spend a charge to cancel a hit or a crit. After a friendly ship is destroyed, recover a charge, and it has one charge. This is... Oh. I think this is powerful. Now, obviously, the power is going to be tempered the more this costs. In fact, this is very dependent on how mm. much it costs. Um, I talk about when I'm evaluating cards. I know I sound like a broken record now. Mm. It's the floor versus the ceiling. And it's so dependent on points. Because if it costs two points, this is fantastic. Because you're going to consistently uh, negate one dice result, mm. and that is worth it for two points. I feel like I want this to cost two points um, for the consistent amount of results that you're going to convert. Mm. If it's four points, I want this to see 
uh, negating two dice results, uh, six would have to be three. That's the kind of way I'm thinking about this. Yeah. Um, look, even just three points and like consistently negating one, sometimes two, feels okay. Yeah. Um, but so, it's it's all about trading off those dice results. Mm. It, it is just trading off dice results. It's not doing anything fancy. Um, yeah. It, it's always going to work. Oh, yeah. Your, your, your opponents are going to roll two hits against you. And if they're not, then you don't care <laughs> because you're still winning anyway. Yeah. It's one of those things, well, if my card's not working, but I'm still winning anyway, I don't care. So, yeah, that's the way I think about this. It feels like a really good effect. Hang on. So it's while you defend after the neutralized result. So you've already rolled your green dice. Yeah, after neutralized result. Yeah, yeah it's, it's after everything. It is yeah. the hard cap on the end of... It's the best time to change dice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is real good. Plus, also, Magna Guard's in the back of that picture. Oh, yes. Look yes. good. Hopefully, we get them um, mm. on their own ship. Uh, yeah, I, I've forgotten what it was called, but... Again, again, Justin knows more about the Clone Wars yeah. than I do. I really got to rewatch this show. Uh, also, one more comment about its power level: it can cancel crit results. Mm. Yep, yeah. yep, that's Gr- really Gr- good. Grievous is good at doing. Uh, you can cancel the crits after you can. Yeah, it's yeah. it's seriously good. It's seriously good. It's going to depend on points. Um, three points, two or three points, fantastic. Five, six points. I'm confident, but not too confident. We'll yeah. see how it goes. There. I was thinking five. I think five is probably fair enough. Yeah. Okay, Palp. Calling Pal- Papa Palpatine. Calling Papa Palpatine. Yes, indeed. Chancellor Palpatine is the face-up version of the card mm. that you equip onto the Republic or Separatists. So it has to be this side up when you start the game. Indeed. And I speculated before this that he was going to be terrible alongside Jedi. Nope. He actually looks pretty legitimate alongside Jedi. Jedi, Sith, he doesn't care. Yeah, um, there are a lot of good applications of this. Anyway, uh, has a force, gives you the purple coordinate. After you defend, if the attack is in range 0 to 2, you may spend a force if you do the attack and stress token. And i got to say, that feels like good stress control. Uh, hmm. Usually, um, we see a gains a stress token or removes a green token. Like, they temper the kind of control you get. So that yeah. feels pretty good. But you can just flip this at the start of the end phase. And I feel like a lot of players are just going to do that. Because yeah. Darth Sidious looks oh, very good. Look at that art as well. I love that art. I like Chancellor Palpatine, but Darth Sidious, after you perform a purple coordinate action, the ship you coordinate gains a stress, then it may gain a focus or recover a force. Yeah, he is, he is forcing that other ship to he's do something. Go over there and shoot and blow something up. Yeah, like he's, he's willing this ship to do something really powerful. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, seriously, in tournaments, I can see people just taking Chance Balvin and just flipping it the first chance they get because, yeah, mm. this is really, really good. Um, there are so many applications. I don't want to bog the video down too much with this. Basically, I, it's good. I want to mention the fact that it gives either Scimitar Force users four Force Charges. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. If you fly them alongside each other, um, you can basically supercharge both of them. If mm. That's going to be... I know two ships, bad. Big ships, bad. We'll see. We'll see, guys. Um, alongside the Jedi Starfighter... We don't know what Anakin Skywalker does yet, but I, I'm assuming this is going to do something with Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. Um, even if Anakin's ability is average, the f- that so good, so good. Yes, tick, 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 tick. Um, I like this a lot. Um, I mean, on the Republic, it only goes on the Ark, and but yeah. the Republic are going to get like shuttles eventually. I'm, I'm guessing. You would assume so. You've got to. Um, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow, you guys, this looks so cool. And also, it comes in the ARC pack. FFG yeah. gave it to both factions. It's like they thought of things ahead of time. Do this more, FFG. Do this more. Like, I, one of my biggest gripe with the conversion kits was the Moldy Crow um, only came in the Rebel pack, not mm. the Scum pack. Um, Triple Zero yeah. BT1 didn't come in. The, you know, you know yeah. all this. We've spoken about all this before. Um, FFG, I want this to be a trend. If something can be filled in multiple factions, please make sure it's supplied in both factions, preferably alongside each other in the same wave. Yeah. Because, look, for tournament play, we need to get access to an ASAP. Um, yeah. And because there's so many factions now, not everyone's going to be flying them. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Mm. Um, yeah, Sidious looks legit. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. 
I'm like, yeah. Just, just, yeah. Except, yeah, what, what comments, what do we do with Sidious? Because my, my head's buzzing. Um, mm. Yeah, I want to hear your thoughts on this, guys. Let's finish this off. We have one more little upgrade to take a look at. The, um, actually, it's a little, it's a ship. It's, it's, a, it's a, kind of. It's a bomb, it's a ship. Who knows, you guys? It's the a D- probe droid. It's a probe droid. The DRK-1 probe droid. The Dark One probe droid, we're going to call it. Yeah. It's a unique bomb for the Separatists. Um, with two charges, during the end phase, you may spend a charge to drop or launch a DRK-1 probe droid using the three... Sorry, using a three-speed template. Mm. Um, it does not specify that it must be a template associated with this ship. Oh. I also just realised it's, it's a three-speed. It's either straight, left or right. Straight, left, right, bank, bank or, or turn, doesn't matter. Yeah. A three-speed turn. So this or the Hyena Bomber can take it. They get full agency to use any one of these templates. Mm. I think it's better on the Skimitar. It allows friendly ships to lock or jam ships measuring range from themselves or from the probe droid. Yeah. Um, uh, not only that, mm. the probe droid has... Five different segments where you can choose from. Oh, yes. It's a little so, um, pentagon shape thing. So yeah. you can fly it around. Uh, it can then reposition during the system phase. So, you know, full information for everything. It definitely mm. always flies first. With the two straight or bank. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think this is... Oh. Yeah. It's got three green dice. Yeah. I mean, don't fly over it, you guys, because it might pop. Um, but at the same time, you have full agency to decide whether to do that or not. Yeah. Um, yeah three green dice. So, uh, look, I, I, I'm curious about this because it's going to depend on costing. But if you blank out one of your opponent's attacks, um, forcing your opponent to spend an attack on this already feels really, really good. If mm. it happens to evade this attack, that is oh. salt inducing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that is feel bads right there. I mean, I, I honestly look at this. I look at most situations in a game, I think I would probably just be forced to ignore this unless I couldn't attack anything else, yeah. in which case it wouldn't matter. Um, but yeah, wasting an attack on this for something with one hull, um, yeah. Uh, but look, the, the ceiling on this is you can jam something from across the board, which is already really cool. Like, mm. my Hexacrypt codes on the First Order is banned um, in uh, hyperspace mm. for that reason. Um, I mean, this might be man in hyperspace, but this isn't just like, do whatever. Yeah. Uh, this is, you have to maneuver this into place and whatever. On the Skimitar, it, I think the best thing you can do is jam. On the Hyena Bomber, it means you can do multiple locks from across the board. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Uh, it's Hyena Bomber significant, I does think. get torpedoes. It does, mm. yes, it does get torpedoes, so... Um, alongside Volta droids, if they have like concussion missiles, yeah, that's not uninteresting. Cluster missiles, like if swarms are a thing, like multiple uh, vultures with cluster missiles, Ooh. and then like yeah, one hyena pops this out, yeah, and um, you target lock spam, and then turn onto your opponent, and then just bam, 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 bam with those yes. cluster missiles. You would feel so good. Okay, magical Christmas land. Yeah, sure. Um, but look, there's applications with this. Am I confident that one of these applications is going to see meta play? Uh, honestly, no. I think there are just way more powerful, consistent things both the Hyena and Skimitar can do. Mm. But it, it's really fun, even from a point of view of just adding some spice for casual play. This is really, really cool. Yeah, I think I'm going to play with it at least once. Oh, yeah. On, on, e- on both the Hyena and the Scimitar. And it's such cool, unique design as yeah. well. Um, I, I love the design with a lot of this stuff, especially on the Separatists, but also with the Republic. Mm. I, I think, seriously, FFG are just hitting some home runs with they this wave. sure are. Looks they? really, really cool. One last thing we're going to mention before we wrap this up is we know the ship also has cannons. Um, just my general thoughts on that. I don't think there's anything really crazy with that. No. Uh, Maul can shoot with a cannon and then fire again with a primary. We know his second attack must mm. be a primary. Uh, maybe like Dooku using those D cloaks and having a heavy laser cannon could be fun. So there is also the auto blaster coming out in wave four. Yes, um, we know it's a cannon. We know it's called auto blaster. We don't know whether it has the same effect. Yeah. Um. Yes, could be super relevant if it's like um fires range one. Mm. And my thoughts on that is, I think the fair thing it could be is you can't cancel one of the hit results I like, like so. a reverse reinforcement like that yeah. maybe that's relevant on the skimitar I don't know 
Um, we have to stop talking because yeah. this video's gone for way too long. Um, look, as more of these come out, hopefully we get some articles on the ARC and all the um, uh, other non units ships. as well. Yeah, uh, all the rest of the parts in the Vulture Droid pack, yeah. the Jedi Starfighter pack. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Reddit. Please consider supporting our Patreon. A nice big surge recently in mm. the interaction on the Patreon Discord. We have about 30 users on there now, which is just awesome. And they were all off talking to each other. and Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Like... We are the catalyst of conversation. Who knew? <laughs> um, the links for all that down in the description if you want to be involved yeah. with that. Um, in the meantime, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.